without my help. Good. I was on my way home. I had just opened up a business and it was in Iowa City. And when I was driving down my road, it's you go through a golf course. There's um, open gates. Um, usually they close the park off, but they leave these gates open for people that go on the back road where I live at. So I slid on the ice and um, I wasn't paying attention. I guess I kind of, all it took was for me to look off the road for a minute and it just happened that fast. And when I hit, I didn't know what was going on. And then I saw that there was a pole up against me, but I didn't think that it went through me. I thought that it was just pushed up against me. That opened up the door and then I started looking for something to grab my phone with. I tried to push myself out of the pole because I didn't think it would have been, went through me. But I couldn't move, I couldn't, so I thought it was just pushed up too hard against me. So I started looking for something to grab the phone with. And when I looked in the back seat, that's when I saw the pole in the back seat coming out of the back. And that's when I realized the pole had went through me. And so I told myself just to calm down and don't freak out or waste too much energy because then I knew I'd pass out. And a car drove by, so I started honking and yelling for help. And the car slowed down, but they wouldn't stop to help me. They kept going. I, I told myself there's got to be something, something that I could get my phone with. And then I realized that the carpet on the passenger floor was rubber and I could, if I could grab that, then I could somehow maneuver it underneath the cell phone to get it towards me. So I was able to reach for it and grab it. And it took me about an hour to get my phone, but eventually I was able to wiggle the carpet underneath the phone and pull it towards me. And when I got it as close as I could, it was um, where the console was on the passenger side. So the phone started ringing again. I was desperate to get it. And so I had pushed myself into the pole a little bit. I had to push myself in so I could reach down far enough to grab the phone. And then I got the phone and I answered it. And my husband was online and I told him that a pole had went through me. And I think that I'm going to die if I don't get help. He needs to call somebody. And then I got off the phone and I dialed 911. And that's when um, a police officer showed up first. And um, he didn't really know what was going on, but once he figured it out, he got in the car and I told him I was cold and I was shaking. And I had my hand on the steering wheel because I was afraid it'd pass out. And it was just an instinct. I didn't want the pull to go through me anymore. So he came and gave me a bear hug to try to warm me up. We had to wait. It took about three hours for them to get me out after the hour I had been waiting because they had to have special, um, these special tools had to come to cut me out, to, to pull out from in front of me and behind me. Then they had to cut the roof off first and um, they covered me up. Another cop was on the other side and they covered me up because they had to bust the windows. And my husband showed up with his cousin and I just remember, um, I was trying to make light of the situation and I told him, I'm sorry, I crashed his car. And then he told me, he said, it's okay. He said, I, he kissed me and he told me, I've always wanted a drop top because <laughs> they had tore the roof off. Once they were able to cut me out, they had shoveled, um, they had shoveled the snow and made a place for the helicopter to land to lift me to Iowa City. and. Um, when they went to go put me in the helicopter, they realized I wouldn't fit the pole that was going through me. I want to say it was five foot long still. So they put me in the ambulance and um, took me to Iowa City. I was still awake. And when we got there, um, I just remember going into a big room, the surgery room, and there was um, all, all these doctors around me in bright lights. And they told me they were going to have me breathe into a mask. And I just remember asking the doctor um, before he put me to sleep. I just wanted to know if I was going to die. 
and I asked him if I was going to live or if I was going to die, and that's all I wanted to know, and he told me I was going to live.